Greetings class, welcome to another episode, I think. Welcome to another lecture session where we discuss of mice and men. Now, the last class we spoke about characters in chapter 2 and today we're going to have a short class where we kind of wrap up chapter 2 but we're going to discuss themes, themes in of mice and men. Now, because throughout the book a lot of these themes are recurring I don't want to be too repetitive, so rather than doing all the themes in chapter 2, I want to talk about a dominant one, or one that is introduced well in chapter 2, and that theme is power and authority. Before we go into the theme itself, just a quick recap. Again, I always do a recap of the chapter in each class. <laughs> Section 2 is the a, is a second day of, of the novel. George and Lenny arrive at the ranch and go to the bunkhouse, where they meet most of the other main characters in the story. Candy and Old Swamper with one hand, Curly, the boss's son, the boss who is suspicious that George will not let Lenny speak up for himself, Curly's beautiful young wife who flirts with the other men, Slim, the top ranch hand <coughs> who is respected by all the other hands, and Carlson, another of the established hands. Slim is friendly towards George and Lenny. Slim's bitch dog has recently given birth to pups. And Lenny begs George to ask him if he will give him one as a give one to Lenny as a pet. Now, before we go into power and authority in of mice and men, it's good to kind of speak about power and authority in general. Now, we have done Animal Farm, we have done Miguel Street so far, <clears throat> so you're not new to the theme of power and authority. Now. What we we'll have to look on are the different angles of power and authority. Now, for power and authority, it can be simply just that: who is in authority, who is in charge, who controls things. Then we we'll have to look on certain factors like how people abuse that power and authority. So it's not just, oh, that's the president and the president is in charge. But what is the president doing to abuse power and authority? Then we can also look on how people use their power and authority, how they may do it well, like somebody who is in charge and who is logical and really takes control. So, for example, in Animal Farm, you had Napoleon versus Snowball, and when Snowball seemed to recognize the power and authority that he had and wanted to do it for better, Napoleon wanted to abuse the power and authority to take over Animal Farm. Um, in Miguel Street, power and authority was very tied into the idea of abuse especially women in society so a lot of the men who had power and authority used that power to abuse and hurt the women in Miguel Street now in chapter 2 we have a lot of different instances of power and authority and how that power and authority comes across first things first we get introduced to George and Lenny in chapter 1 and immediately we see that George is in control. He has authority over Lenny. And that has a lot to do with the fact that he is obviously a lot more mentally stable than Lenny is. So his authority, his power is being used to take care of Lenny. The flip side of that is Lenny is very tall. Lenny is very strong. So Lenny actually has some power and his power may be physical strength. Now, I wanted to kind of look on that a little bit because the physical strength becomes a factor. It becomes a factor in Miguel Street when the men use their physical strength to abuse women. In Of My and Men, <clears throat> physical strength becomes a very important turning point in many different parts of the novel. It is hinted at in Chapter 2 when Curly is picking on Lenny and George kind of lets the people know that, all right, we understand that Curly likes to pick on bigger guys, but if he picks on Lenny, he has something coming for him, you know? And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Lenny is so strong and not even fully in control of his own strength. And if George is unable to control Lenny's strength, there's going to be a problem. Um... So that physical strength becomes a type of power that Lenny has that, become, that, that is hard to control, that George has to technically control. Um, which then also looks on mental strength. You know, the mental strength that Lenny doesn't have, the mental strength that George has, and how George uses his mental strength to keep Lenny in 
check. Now, moving on to other different versions of um, power and authority, we have status. Now, when we look at the status now, here's, a, here's what I'm going to read from an article that I'm going to post on the page. Right? It says, um, oh, hierarchy is what we call status. So, hierarchy is just who is at the top tier. So, if you're in a school, the hierarchy, you have the principal, you have the vice principal, you have the dean of the discipline, then you have the head of departments, and you have the teachers. That's a hierarchy. You know, so the higher up you go, you know, that's hierarchy. Now, the hierarchical structure of, of mice and men places the most power in a character referred to as simply the boss, right? We don't even have to worry about the name. It's just the boss. And in future chapters, we're going to kind of look on how status is shown in naming where you know like what they say in jamaica you might not know people name you know what them do <laughs> so you don't know the carpenter name say so just call him carpenter that is how it kind of is in of mice and men but that comes with also the hierarchy so you have the boss another example of um that hierarchy when it comes to for example curly's wife they don't even call her Mrs. anything. They just call her Curly's wife. That's the name that she has. There's nothing else that, that, that she's called. And this is an example of status. Um, so it says, refer to as simply the boss. He's introduced and given the most authority as the boss. This is shown when the boss enters the room. And here's a quote from the book. He wore blue jean trousers, a flannel shirt, a black unbuttoned vest, and a black coat. Right? In the last chapter, we spoke, when we spoke about characters, we spoke about how wearing certain things shows that you're not in the fields. And I think high heel boots is an example of one of, one of those things. Where if you're not wearing very comfortable clothing, you're obviously not in the fields. Right? And this article by Nathwani, which says how the theme of authority is explored in the novel of Mice and Men, it goes into that. You understand? Um, so the boss is obviously the top of the hierarchy and there are certain ways where we see that status. We see it in how he dresses, we see it in how he speaks, how he refers to people. Um, a quote that, that, that comes up to is when he said, um, when Lenny doesn't respond because George is telling him to keep quiet and they don't know that Lenny has a problem so they take it as disrespect and they are saying that he should speak when spoken to. So this is an example of status. Curly is obviously next. Curly is about his son. And, you know, the, the way he dresses, the way he speaks, the way he moves. So he's more, indica his, his indicator is more in his actions. So we have, with the boss, we have presentation, the visual, how they look, right? Then they have the actions, how Curly acts, you know? And then now you have respect, Power and authority kind of comes from respect as well, where you may not be the boss, you may not be top of the hierarchy, but you are respected. And that is something definitely to be um, noticed when in of mice and men when it comes to power and authority. That the more you're respected, the more power you seem to have because people will listen to you and people will follow you. Um, and that's where Slim falls in. Um, when we spoke about characters, I spoke about him being the top of the bunch. But that top of the bunch has to do with just, you know, intelligence, respect, how he works. And even how he presents himself has a lot to do with that. When the author is describing, and I'll go through that description in the characters chapter in the previous um, presentation. But when the author is describing Slim, that power and authority comes out. Another example of the power and authority shows now with the lack of respect, you know, the lower, the lowest tier, which is the black man crooks. He is called a nigger. He is treated like an outcast. And it's to the point where when they allow him to hang out with them, they celebrate it. It's like, even sometimes we play horseshoe with him. And that shows you the extent of what is happening. The racism that exists, the cultural differences and how his physical color brings him down the hierarchy and that power and authority is definitely taken away from him um he has no power or authority on this ranch so looking back over it we have to just to recap and i'm going to just read one more thing from the article 
right? Although in terms of the ranch hierarchy, Slim is not as high as Curly and his father. He is, without a doubt, the most authority figure in the eyes of the other workers. So this is what we talk about when we say respect, right? So when we look on power and authority, power and authority, the three things that we are looking on, physical strength, right, and image, the presentation, status, and respect. And each character expresses that power and authority in a different way. When we're moving on to chapter three, I want us to now look on how people in the setting, how they refer to other characters and how these themes then come out. Um, other themes like, you know, women in society, um, friendship, family relationship, definitely very important. But right now, I just wanted to focus on power and authority. A test will be given today, so please, Look for that test and we will move on to chapter three next class. Big up.